Hanging out on a frigid but getting progressively uh, warmer uh, day. Um, my name is Laura Groove. I am a professor of economics at Bullitt College. I have had the distinct pleasure of working with Emeritus Professor Jeff Adams uh, and also Nick DeMassis to put together this series, which we have entitled Know Your Local Government. Um, as you may guess from the title, that our primary goal is to provide information about local government with the idea that it can be somewhat difficult to find uh, this information, especially as much of our news tends to be national these days. Um, so we have uh, Sherry Oja with our, us today, and uh, this is her second round. We are so pleased that she has agreed to come back um, and present um, on Rock County. So she is the finance director of Rock County. And then um, I want to alert you to the upcoming events. We have Jason Stein, who is with the Wisconsin Policy Forum. He will be joining us less than a month from now on February 7th. And then Robert Chady, who is actually here today uh, doing some research, I think, <laughs> uh, will be presenting on February 21st, and he is with uh, School District of Beloit. Um, so those are the next two, and there are several after um, going into March as well. Um, yes, so I'm going to turn it over to Sherry, but be before I do, I also want to say thank you to the State Line uh, Community Foundation for their support and, importantly, for providing the box to lunches. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, what, now for a couple minutes? So, um, at, as was mentioned, I'm Sherry Oja, Rock County Finance Director. And, um, let's see. So, I'm here to talk about the county. So, first, what is the county? Um, it's, of course, a form of local government. We have uh, 29 members of the Board of Supervisors. They're all elected. Um, every a department falls under a governing committee that you know approves um, policies, resolutions, um, goals, and then each county either has an elected county executive or um, a county administrator that's approved by a county board. So the main um, goal of the county is we are a provider of services. Um, and we're also the administrative arm of the state. So unlike many states, uh, the counties in Wisconsin um, do many of the state functions, such as we, may, we maintain judicial court records, we manage the state elections, we keep vital statistics and property records, such as birth and death and marriage certificates. Um, we enforce and we prosecute state criminal laws, and we carry out many state programs. For example, um, we carry out um, human services, child support programs, where in many states these are handled by the state themselves, not the counties. Many county governments in other states um, are, are much smaller. And uh, we, as the administrative arm of the state, we are limited to only what the state allows us to do or what is mandated. You can find, I'm sure everybody here really wants to um, read state statutes, but they're fine. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, chapter 59 is a good read. Okay. You want to learn more about counties. Noted. All right, so um, there'll be a pop quiz next next year. Um, so this is the county organizational chart. Um, so we have the board of supervisors, and the south line is who has supervisory over who. Um, and then we supervise the county administrator and the court counsel. And then you can see going down how the county administrator, the department that um, the county administrator supervises. For 2024, um, we added one, emergency management. Um, a few years ago, emergency management used to be its own 
department and then it was um, moved over to the sheriff's office but it has now broken off and become its own department again. So no new functionality or responsibilities. It's just now directly under the supervision of the county administrator once again. And then the dotted lines is, uh, is budgetary authority. So over here to the left are elected positions, uh, but the budgetary authority falls under the board of supervisors. So in 2024, the Rock County budget was uh, almost $229 million. So this isn't all levy, just a small portion of this levy, um, about $70 million, which we'll get into that in a, in a little bit. So our budget process is very long, very detailed. So in June and July, uh, the larger departments do a pre-budget pre presentation to the county board staff and finance committees. That um, kind of gives an overview of how the year is going, how do they expect the next year to go. Um, and then also in July, uh, the budget, the departments submit their budget requests for the next year. So their budget requests are very detailed. They are required for each line item to put in writing, you know, what's the reason for the increase or what's the incre reason for the decrease, what kind of new budget are they asking for, that could be new positions, um, new projects, and then if what would need to be done to get down to a zero levy budget. For example, what services would need to be cut, um, that type of thing in order to get down to a zero dollar levy. Then in um, August through September, administration and finance departments meet with every department. We go through each department's budget in very detail. So, you know, even down to office supplies. Why Why did that increase by 10%? So it's very detailed. Again, August through September, every budget um, in, in detail. And then the recommended budget is finalized. That would be the county administrator's recommended budget per state statutes. Um, he's required to put together the recommended budget for the county board. And then uh, in October, the county administrator presents the recommended budget to the county board. Um, the first presentation is just a um, high level overview, you know, of what's new, what new projects. Um, and that's at the time, same time the uh, recommended budget is published. And then a little bit later, um, he does a, I didn't put that up there, but he does um, a few hour meeting with the county board members. It's a, a meeting open to the public, and um, it's usually three or four hours. It's recorded on YouTube if you would like, <laughs> you know, to binge watch any of the county board meetings. Um, it's a little more fun than the state statutes, but. Um, and then also during that time period, each department um, discusses the administrative recommended budget with their governing committee. Yes. Can you tell me, do you view the capital budget and the operating budget separate, or are they the same process structure? So uh, in the spring, early summer, um, the five-year capital project <coughs> plan is updated, but that doesn't mean that's what's gonna make it into the budget. So in these detailed meetings, that's, when um, the capital budget is also reviewed and recommended by the county administrator for that year. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then the governing committees can then make appeals, say they don't like something the county administrator cut out or um, 
you know, sometimes a position isn't recommended or the governing committee really feels that position is needed, that's just one example. So then they can appeal to the finance committee. Um, and then after all the departments have met with their governing committees, there's a uh, finance committee that hears the appeals and uh, they vote on their recommendation. And then in November, there's a public hearing um, where the public can come and discuss the budget. Um, they're, um, you know, if they want the budget to double, which, you know, that always happens with the people that love their taxes, right? Okay, that's fine. But they, they come to the public hearing and give their um, opinions of the budget. Then the county board adopts the budget and, um, and then the finance department does the apportionment to for all the municipalities. So that is we receive the apportionment is based on equalized values. The equalized, oh, I'll get into equalized values in a little more. I wouldn't want to, you know, um, you know, break the suspense here because I'm sure you know this. But So, how is the county funded? So everybody's aware of the property taxes, but what else goes into that? So here is just a high level breakdown of the pie chart of various um, areas of funding. So the largest area, the green area, is intergovernmental revenue. <coughs> so that is made up of um, a lot of grants, state funding, like I said, uh, the counties are the administrative arms of the state, so the state does partially fund a lot of their mandated services. Um, so that comes in through state taxes. <coughs> well, and uh, intergovernmental revenues can be also such as you know, federal grants, um, like highway aids. It could be Medicare, Medicaid that um, the nursing home and human services bill for. The uh, next largest, the purple, is of course property taxes and interest on taxes. But also what's made up in the revenue are um, regulation and compliance charges. They could be fines um, collected by the courts, marriage licenses, board of health permits, um, there's also pub, uh, a little bit of public charges for services. Um, those could be, say, land records, um, register of deeds, real estate fees, um, alt landing fees. You know, there's a, a, a variety of, of the little fees there. And then the other general revenues could be um, donations, such as to the veteran services office they take a little um, some donations it could also be fund balance used that isn't general fund balance but highway fund balance or rock haven fund balance <clears throat> so that are the other general revenues and then of course there's long-term debt proceeds which in 2024 at this time there's no debt in the budget and um yeah, and then general fund application, which we had some of that this year. So that general fund application is basically the use of fund balance. And we also have um, county sales tax down there. Question. Yes. So when the county sales tax was finally approved by the county board, it was supposed to be for capital improvements mm -hmm. only. What percentage of it now is used for operations? I have a chart for that. <laughs> so, Good question, good planning. So again, <laughs> keep everybody in suspense. Okay, so these are some examples of the intergovernmental revenues from the state, that, you know, state shared revenue. Uh, I mentioned Medicare, Medicaid. Um, child support is 66% federally reimbursed. The other 34% is state reimbursed. Um, and then we have various grants for um, all the different departments, or some of the different departments. And public works, they get general transportation aids every year. 
Can you just tell me, is, the, is Black Haven fully funded through the Medicaid and Medicare program? Or is there some application of county local funds to Black Haven? You all are very good. I have a chart for that. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so in 2024, uh, I believe there were, was about $4 million of levy put into Rock Haven. So back, I mean, I've been with the county now for seven, oh my, almost 17 years. Um, so way back then, back in the day, the levy used to be closer to 13 million and then went down to nine and down to six. And so, you know, been working on that. And one of the reasons that Rock Haven has always been partially levy funded is uh, many nursing homes, they have um, a certain payer mix. Having Medicare and Medicaid residents, uh, the uh, rate that you receive doesn't usually cover the cost. And so since Rock Haven, we only accept Rock County residents. It has been the long-standing view of the board that um, we will take the people who need a little extra funding. So, you know, they have a place to go that other nursing homes can't necessarily afford to take. So that's why um, we add that levy to it. Although the rates are getting better, which is why the, uh, the levy request went down for 2024. Okay, so state sales tax collections. Um, so in 2020, 2007 is when we first started collecting the half a percent sales tax and started collecting it in about April, which is why it's you know extra low. But um, so these are how our collections have progressed. I've always you know especially even during COVID, I was impressed at the shopping ability of our residents. Our sales tax collections keep going up and. As was mentioned, it was the goal of the um, county board to use the sales tax collections for capital projects to limit the amount of debt that we um, need to issue. So the red line is how much of it has been used for operations, and the uh, light blue line is how much has been being used for capital. Um, so, as you can see, back since I think it's 2010, the operational um, portion has stayed steady at about seven and a half million. I think it's seven million five hundred twenty-two thousand, but about seven and a half million. Um, and as we increase the collections of sales taxes, you know, more it is applied to capital. So that could be things at, such as uh, a new roof, um, replacement of squad cars. Uh, a lot of it, each year some of it's put into uh, highway projects. Um, a lot of it goes into facilities projects. Sometimes it goes to um, upgrading 911 function functionability. Um, and you've probably all heard about the little project we have going on for the jail, LES. Um, quite a bit of sales tax has already been poured into that, believe it or not. So um, so building projects are being partially funded with sales tax. So that's, that's how we use the sales tax. Okay, so the, t the 2024 tax levy was about seventy-five and a half million dollars. So it's made up of a various components. First, the operations levy. That was about sixty-eight million dollars. And the increase in the operations levy is limited to um, net new construction percentages. So we can't go above that. Um, that's that's the way it is. There's some other things that go into it, such as Rescinded taxes, if somebody's assessment, you may think business changed, you know, that, that, that can change that, but 
basically limited to the net new construction. So in 2024, that was 2.14%, and for the 2023 budget is 1.67%, because it's been as low as that half, half percent. So we're very limited for the operations. And then there's the debt levy. Debt levy, we can only levy for what we actually need to pay the debt that year, which is, makes sense, common sense. Um, and it is not levy limited. So in a, in a future slide, we have a limit of how much debt we can issue and carry at one time, but the levy limit is not, um, does not have a so-called and then uh, the library system. So it used to be they are a library system just for the county, but then they joined the Prairie Lakes library system. So those are levied on the towns, towns and the village of Footville because they do not have um, libraries. So their residents then would use other libraries. Um, and it's, so the reimbursement to the other libraries is based on um, usage of the Oregon County's residents. And then we also have bridge aid. Um, that's levied on towns um, for bridge and culvert repair. So in 2023 it was zero, 2024, 50,000. Um, and basically that's determined by the needs of the towns, what bridges and culverts. So it, it's usually, you know, very small though. Levy. This is how it has, was broken down the last couple years. So you can see the Sheriff's Office of Public Safety is the largest um, levy department. Uh, they get some other other pieces, but it's it's mostly levy. Um, and then the Human Services Department is next, um, and then you know the Communication Center. Um, so a lot of public safety in the budget, and then Rock Haven. So as you can see, it it low has been going down. Um, <laughs> the main reason it went down in 2024 is given that Medicare and Medicaid fees went up, which was very very helpful. And the remaining departments there make up the rest of the budget. So this is the um, historical debt for the county. The outstanding debt at, at the end of each year. So um, we do have a legal debt capacity, which is our equalized value. It's 5% of equalized value. So as you can see, we have always been way under the limit. And that, that's the limit for counties, and those numbers, yes, are real. So, um, we have always been at a very small percentage of the actual debt we would be allowed to issue. Are those numbers for craziness? I can't, we would never issue that much debt, but that's what is allowed. Can I ask a question? Sure. So, Eric, what is the debt capacity of the city of Wood? It's limited to 5%. I know, but where are you guys at of that 5%? We are under 3%. <coughs> Our, we have an internal policy of 3.5%, so we actually go 1.5% lower than the statute says, and then we're still even um, about 20% under what that is. We're in pretty good position. Same as the county is. Mm -hmm. Not as good as the county is. But yeah. Thank you. Are you going to ask him a couple weeks? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to leave. But <laughs> <coughs> I'll build it into my presentation. <laughs> so, so um, the county, we issue geo bonds. We cannot issue revenue bonds, such as other local municipality governments have. We don't have a, a source to pay off revenue bonds. So if you have a Say a water utility, uh, that's one example. You could issue revenue bonds and they'd be paid back um, from the, the 
fees charged out, but the county is, is, does not have anything like that. So um, we only issue general obligation bonds. And we do that by going out to market and we, um, in order to receive the best rate, we have never needed to um, say do short term loans from a bank or long term loans, those interest rates are much higher. Um, we've, we've, no, we've been able to manage our cash flow so we've never needed any kind of debt like that. Um, usually the debt is limited to 10 years for say highway projects. Um, but in recent years, we've had a couple large projects. The Human, New Human Services Building um, and the Jail LAS project. And those issues are for 20 years. And as I mentioned earlier, there's no debt um, in the budget for 2024. So then, Sherry, so yeah. the difference so looking at that top line, uh -huh. the total outstanding debt, uh -huh. from 2022 it was about 56 million, and then 2023 it's 109 million. million. Yeah. So the explanation is the jail and the human resource building? Correct. How much of that is the jail? Just about all of it. There's a little bit for um, highway from previous years, um, but most of it's for the jail. And we still have about 38.4 million in debt left to issue for the jail. But we spread it out so that it doesn't hit all at once. It is a big hit, but not all at once. So we, we plan on issuing that debt here likely next month. So thank you for noticing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the tax rate per thousand, the um, calculated tax rate, that's how you determine um, how much property taxes you're gonna pay. So the tax rate is calculated by dividing county-wide equalized value, which was a bit over 18 billion in, um, for the 2024 budget. And you divide that, or you divide the, the levy by the equalized value rate. So as you can see, the, equal, the mill rate has been going down, going down significantly. Um, then I'll show you the next screen, how it has an inverse relationship with the equalized value. But you can see here in the 2009 area, that's when the housing market crashed and everybody's value went down. Um, and uh, I should say that a little bit later, that's why the mill rate went up and the equalized value went down. I'll show that in the next slide. So here are the equalized values. You can see that little dip down there when the housing market had a, a downturn. Um, so, because you divide by the divide the property tax levy by the equalized value, when the equalized value goes up, because we cannot, we, we are under such tight levy limits for property um, tax levies, the property tax levies aren't going up nearly as quickly as the equalized values, which forces the um, mill rate down. <coughs> And again, the uh, 2024 um, equalized value was about 18.5 billion, um, and the uh, 2023 was about 16 billion. So you can see how lately there's been a huge increase. But in the real estate world, as an insurance world, what goes up must come down. So eventually, I'm sure um, we'll see the graph start going a bit the other way. But for now. The equalized value amounts come, the county gets those from the state. We get the, the state um, calculates the equalized value. And the um, goal of that is to equalize each muni, muni's assessment values because, you know, if um, 
a municipality just went through an assessment, it could be at 100%. If it's been a couple years, as you can see with the housing market, it could all of a sudden, their assessed value could be 80% of equalized value. So the um, state calculates those numbers um, to better even out how the levies are apportioned. Now, I, I've heard some people say over the last couple years that the county can manipulate equalized values in order to better, um, to be able to levy additional property taxes, but not so much. It comes from the state. The county can't do anything with equalized values. Um, the county also has nothing to do with property assessments. We just get the numbers, they're hard, and that's the way it is. So, um, Again, along with the state statute reading and watching the county board videos, you can also go to the DOR website and look at all the individuals um, you need to equalize values for the past several years. All right, so I'm um, going talk about where the money comes from. So how are the funds used? So again, here's a pie chart that shows um, like various categories of how the money is used. Um, health and Human Services is obviously the largest one with public safety. So this slide shows you in those categories which departments fall under those categories. So public safety, sheriff is the largest user department uh, in public safety, but public safety um, also includes courts, child support, and like one one and those kind of things and, and that breakdown. Um, okay, and so um, there are several good resources out there to find information. So here from the Wisconsin Legislative website, Chapter 22 of the Wisconsin statute um, gives a good description of municipal and county government. It kind of spells out the differences of what villages, towns, counties can do, what they're responsible for. Um, I found it to be a very interesting, useful document. Also, the county's website has if you go under departments, under administration, and under budget information, there's a lot of great information there. There's a um, statistical report, if, you're, if you love your numbers, as I do. So it breaks down um, a lot of the categories, the charts that I had here. It also breaks it down in more detail what every department's levy was requested and then adopted over the last couple years. It shows um, what the, the mill rate history for 20 years. Um, it, again, a lot of good information. There's also the recommended budget for every county department. And in each one of those documents, it, it, it gives the information on what does the department do, what they're responsible for, um, and then detailed well, um, explanations of what was recommended in the budget, you know, what changed, what are the larger projects that are being funded, and how they're being funded. For example, under general services, that's there at the governing committee for our facilities management department. So then you can see what kind of big capital projects are in the budget um, and how they're being funded. If it's being funded by sales tax levy or um, it's being funded by sales tax revenue or property tax levy. Um, or, as in um, a couple recent years, if there's a larger project that's being funded by debt. And then there's also, uh, okay, well, I mentioned the DOR. Um, but again, I would highly recommend going to the county's website. There is so much information there about about the budget and it goes back to budgets back through 2010 I think so um, and then also on the website is the administrator's letter this is one of the first things he hands out to the county board members and it's a several page um, letter 
that gives a higher level view of what's being recommended in the budget and, um, and why. How sales taxes are being used, and that kind of thing. So um, if you, there's his budget presentation, which is the high, high level. There's this, which is a little more detail, and then there's the individual budgets um, that show a great amount of detail for each department. Yep. During your budget discussion, there seems to be um, reports in the news about controversies related to ARPA funds and projects and uses of those funds. Can you just kind of give us a high level summary of what those discussions were and where you're at with those funds? So all of our, the county was allocated about $32 million in ARPA funds. Um, they have to be all out, they allocated out by the end of 24 and spent by the end of 26, I believe. Um, there was a small part of that money that had um, more general way we could use it. So, you know, we had more discretion in how we could use it. But the rest of the funds, it was very specific on the things that we could use it for. So sometimes somebody wants to use funds for a project, but it's just not allowed. As much as we think that project may be good, it's just not allowed. Um, and there have been, you know, Pots of money allocated to certain projects like small business loan grants, small business grants. Um, there haven't been as many businesses that applied that we thought, so some of that money was reallocated for other purposes. In that budgetary document on the county's website, it's under the finance committee budget document through this, about the last page, there's a big chart there about the ARPA funds and how they've been allocated and how much in what years, what years they've been used for and what years are we budgeted for in the future, so. Yes? Um, how did Act 12 and, or 19 impact the, the county's budget related to your shared revenue uh, increase? What, where did you end up? That would, was um, allocated mainly to the, the public safety, so like the sheriff and 911. Very helpful, yeah. Could you go back to your organizational chart? Sure. Um, Ooh, there we go. Yes. So the, the courts and all of that is funded by the state? No. So they, they fund, um, so on the left here, the only thing they pay is the district attorney's salary as, and the ADA salaries. All the supporting staff for the DA is funded by the county. And then all the staff and all the other departments and everything else is funded by the county. But the, so the district attorney's office, again, it's just the salaries for the district, the DA and the ADA. All supplies, office space, office space supporting staff, all that is. Um, for the courts, the judges are funded by the state, but again, all the supporting staff, supplies, space, um, is all funded by the county. Me. Public defenders. No, public defenders um, isn't part of the county budget process at all. Was that broken out as a separate? Yep, that is a separate department. Several years ago, it used to be part of the um, Department of Public Works, but a few years ago, then it, it broke out and it became its own separate department. Uh, sometimes I get the question, is that levy funded? It does have a few hundred thousand dollars of levy in there, um, but it does collect revenues from hangar rentals. Um, part of the land is used for a golf course, so we lease out land for a golf course. There's sometimes I'm asked, well, why don't we sell that land? It's because I'm sure there's technical explanations, but um, big buildings can't be um, built by the airport because of the way the, of the plane take off. So the golf court, golf course is um, a good use for the land, and the county gets revenues from there. 
And then in the past, we used to have um, special difficulty with these. Um, there used to be events out there that would get revenue from. And now there's a restaurant which loses some space. So, but otherwise, it's um, partially levied. There's still just two departments that actually generate revenue for the county, or does the airport fall into that now? No, the airport does not. They're partially um, levy funded. So the um, register of deeds generates revenue for the county um, because of the, the real estate transfer fees. So, uh, and then also the treasurer's office because we with our fund balances and cash flows, we kind of manage those to the best that we can so that we put the money to use, we invest the money. We have um, some of it in the LGIP, which local government investment pool. Um, and then we also invest and we have an investment advisor. So we buy treasuries, um, AAA rated stocks and mutual funds. We're pretty limited by the state of what we can invest in. It all has to be very, um, <coughs> very um, good recommend, you know, AAA or treasuries. And so um, that interest income then is deposited into the treasuries department. But basically that's used to lower um, revenues that we need for other departments. Yes. What is the level, I'm just curious, what the level of interest and penalty is on delinquent taxes? I don't think it's changed. That you mean the percentage? Well, like in 2008 and stuff, it was like $3 million. Oh, so, so it's, now okay. is it like now, down to a million? Or no, now it's down million? to about two and a half million. Two and a half? Mm -hmm. And it's been staying steady for the past few years. Okay. Well, thank you so much, mm -hmm. Sherry.